Okay, we're now going to pick up where we left off in the previous video going over some more advanced features of the fill tool as well as some more advanced use cases. So let's resume working with the gradient mode and in this case let's choose fade opacity and I'm going to switch to my head UV map here and let's say you want to apply some reptile scales but you want to blend them in with other patterns here you don't want it to be completely uniform you want to break it up a little bit so what we can do is choose a stencil here and we can use regular camera projection which is your default mode here but we could also use cube mapping as well and when you choose cube mapping or cylindrical or spherical Okay, you don't see anything initially, but once you start trying to make some adjustments here, all of a sudden you can see a preview. So we can scale it. Okay, and you can choose different patterns. So this would be one way of trying to modulate it rather than just using your modulation options, which we will look at here momentarily. But uh, let's choose something that's a little bit more uniform. Okay, and then you would decide which channels to use. In this case, let's go with all three. Uh, I might turn specularity off because I think we've used that enough. But Let's see, with depth, we don't want deep recesses. We want just minor extrusions. So what I'll do is I'll close that momentarily. And with gradient mode and fade opacity, I'll choose pick point one, and then pick point two. So now I can use this again, and then just pick on the object here. You can see I get a nice blend. Let me undo that. So I can switch that up a little bit and bring my depth value up. I'll click on it once more. Undo one more time. This time let's choose spherical gradient. Okay, so let's reverse this now by moving your point. Maybe you want to scale it up a bit. Just go ahead and click on the mesh one more time. I need to undo. And so rather than apply it to the ears, I might just click on the UV island. So I'll undo that. And this time, instead of cube mapping, let's go with camera. And I'll choose reset. And I'll click on my UV island. So I might choose pick point one here, pick point two. And then again, just click on the island. I'll close that. We'll try pick point one here, pick point two. I'll bring that back up. So I may want to reduce the size a bit. I can skew it if I need. Let me do that. Okay, so for demonstration purposes, that should illustrate it fairly well that you can somewhat use this gradient mode to blend the different sizes together in kind of a really organic way. And you also have the ability to distort your image here if you need to, just like you would use Liquify in Photoshop. And you could save it and reload it later on and so on. 
Now, another thing I can do is use the Fill tool in conjunction with Constraints. I can apply more color in the cavity or less in the cavity. In other words, it would be more on the heights rather than in the crevices. So let's choose more in cavity. And I'll stick with gradient mode here. But this time I'm going to choose a darker color. Maybe darken it a bit more. And pick point one. And pick point two. And once more, I'll just click on the mesh. And you can see how 3D Coat blended it really nicely only in the cavities. Okay, so let me undo that because I forgot to turn the depth channel on. We just want to apply color. So we'll try this one more time. I'll just go ahead and click on the mesh. And then we can go in and smooth it if we like. A lot of different things that we could do. We can adjust the color, even bring the color opacity down. So let me go ahead and get out of gradient mode and we're now going to look at modulation. So let's choose something like noise. I'll hide that layer. And I'll create a new blank layer here. And when you choose a modulation type, you have the ability to modulate depth, modulate color, and specularity. In this case, let's turn specularity off. And for the time being, we'll turn depth off. So let me choose a really bright color just for demonstration purposes only. Okay, and what I want to show is you can right click on your foreground color and 3D Coat is just going to use this to modulate with. You have the ability here to use your preview to see what it's going to look like beforehand. You scale your window. Now the color preference parameter allows you to move the slider to the left to decrease the influence of the color or move it to the right to increase it. Likewise, the concavity. All right. And then you can adjust the opacity of that color as well. It's worth noting that the noise procedural pattern does not have a scale parameter, but many of the others do. So let's choose Gaussian noise, uh, wavy surface. And then you'll notice some of these procedural patterns here have a scale as well as anisotropy. And you can always go lower than this point 0.1, but when you use the slider, it usually will stop at point 0.1 or 10 max. But you can always go above that if you add it manually here. And once again, you can see your color preferences change and your opacity. Now, if I right click to turn our colors on, now 3D Coat is going to try and blend the foreground color with the colors I have here. So you can disable that again by right clicking or turn it back on. Now if I want to use just the foreground color here, once more I can remove the opacity of these colors. So I'll go ahead and turn that off. And let's try some different patterns here. Strips, saw pattern. Hexagon, you can bring your shape up. All 
So I'm going to enable that color so we can see this a little bit better. So you might could even use these uh, some of these procedural patterns for reptile type scales. Okay, so let's use our gradient again. I'm now going to turn off the color channel and just work with depth. And come over here and choose modulate depth. And we can adjust our depth on the fly, see what it's going to look like. I'm going to stop the video right here and we're going to pick up in the next one. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.